Hi, and welcome to Epic Restorations. Today, we're finishing up our steering rebuild series by installing our new horn and light switch rod. A few weeks ago, we rebuilt our steering gearbox. Before painting it, we installed a new end plate, a gasket, and a light switch bracket. The steering housing end plate has a long oil retaining tube on it that goes up above the oil level to try to prevent oil from leaking onto the wiring harness. The light switch bracket bolts to the bottom of the steering column with two bracket bolts and lock washers. Next, we painted the gearbox attached it to the steering column and bolted it onto the chassis. With the gearbox and steering column installed, all that's left to do is install the horn and light switch rod. We began with the steering wheel. Before the steering wheel can be installed, you must first attach the steering wheel key at the top of the shaft. I'm just gonna tap it a little bit. Okay. Now, our steering wheel has two keyways. Uh, I think as Ford designed it, the steering will be like this when you're straight. But a lot of people like to install them so that it's more this way when you're straight. So they've kind of given you that option. The top key here would be this orientation and the other X orientation would be this keyhole. So that's just an aftermarket steering wheel. Which a lot of people like this, do they say they can see the gauges easier? I don't know. So I'm going to line that top key up with that woodruff key. It's on there. Now we need the, the nut. It's important to not over tighten the steering wheel nut on the steering wheel shaft. If you go too far, you run the risk of twisting the threaded end right off. Tighten it to a snug fit and you'll be just oh, fine. Turn wheels. That was really nice. Everything is tight. Very good. We're gonna do our horn button rod. The first thing is we should put this new brass bushing. We'll keep things nice and smooth so the rod, the horn light switch will turn. So I've got that pushed on there. Before pushing the horn and light switch rod through the steering shaft, it's best to fit all of the pieces together on the workbench just to be sure that they'll all go together properly. And it's a good thing that we did. The first problem we encountered was the fit of the spider on the end of the horn and light switch rod. We bought our rod new, but the end was boogered up just a little bit. George worked to square it up on the end and then carefully filed it down until the spider slid on properly. Perfect. We're ready to do our bottom. And the first thing is we got this rubber washer here, which kind of originally was to help with oil, and but I still want to put it in there, even though we got the newer tube. 
then we'll slide the spring on and then we'll take the spider and the spider has to go up up and down in this way not side to side but up and down because being a square you could possibly change that orientation on the on the horn rod but it's going to be that way that will end up on there and then we're going to have to push this spring down on that rod so we can get this little tiny c-clip and and we're going to slide it on the rod and then when the spring comes back the c-clip will fit well sort of both fit right into this recess of the spider and get it hmm okay So on the spiders, there's a, a pocket here that the C-clamp is supposed to fit down in. But I find they don't always fit. And this is a stamped out one. And see, it's got a little bit of a ledge. It might serve, but the, this is pushed down by the spring. And so the spring should keep the C-clamp down in this housing so it can't fall off that horn rod. So ours did not fit as it came so what I did is I took this little Dremel with a little grinder wheel and I just kind of went around the perimeter here a little bit in order to, to make sure I have all the burrs removed. Then we looked at the C, we tried to take the C-clip, which is this right there, and we found it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit down into that slot. And I had to take just a little bit of the ear right in through here and the other side of it because it's got to basically be round to fall down in there. So I had to kind of do this little face here, that little ear. And once I did that, we can see it falls down. Now it looks like I can take a little bit more off. I'm up on this edge. So let me try that. I'm gonna hold it with these linemans, get my Dremel going. a little at a time. Let me turn it around. Might as well do the other side too. Now, I'm going to take just ever such a small amount off. And I'd rather tried this over and over a couple of times because the deal is and when we're pushing the spider back on its spring we can slide this on the shaft there see how it fell right into that hole and that'll hold that everything on there that C can't come out because it's trapped in that little indentation so I believe I'm gonna try a different position it should just fall in that's what we want now you'll not have a little bunch of struggle and I should be able to even turn this around in there. And it fits nicely, see? A little tight right there, so it could be the casting. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little bit more out of that casting. And then this one's a cast one, not a stamp. There, it's, it should just fall in there nicely. Yeah, maybe I'll turn it around now. Okay, so I think we got enough play. This would make installing the C-clip a breeze. And you get a special tool that'll push this down so you got room, but I'm gonna just use some needle nose pliers. Okay, so now we've pre-fit the outside edge to the spider you sometimes can struggle with the inside edge being too tight to go on to that horn rod. Now I just checked it and we're too tight. So I want to remove just a little bit on this inside edge here and on here. I'm going to do that with my Dremel again. I'll just with my lineman's pliers if I can. So I just have a cutting wheel I'm going to kind of use as a bit of a grinder. Okay. 
Again, it shouldn't take much. Point being, you want to pre-fit this, otherwise you're going to struggle when you go to put it on. Pre-fit it to the spider, pre-fit it to the to the rod, and that way it should just slide right in there easily like it's supposed to. So now we're just going to pre-fit this. It goes in that little channel down there. My hands are probably going to get in the way a little bit. But I want to make sure there it fits all the way on that and nicely when i first tried this i couldn't even push it on it, it doesn't really fit tight it's just enough that now as the spring is pulling against this it's gonna it's gonna keep that spider from falling off so the c holds it in there and the spider has a little gap that holds the c without moving and then things should just hold together but if you don't pre-fit this, you're just gonna be struggling like crazy. We know spider fits on there nice. We know this fit in on the channel, but now you gotta check when this comes together, will that fit down in there? And it's not. So we either gotta take a little more off this, this C-clip or a little more hole or try to make, make it a little tighter the C-clip doesn't, well, I think the C-clip is getting on there as far as it can. So maybe I got to work stuff off the back side of that C-clip so it'll fall down in there. Now that we've ground a lot more off that, and I've checked that this is the way I gotta put that little C-clip in there. I'll just ride that up there. <laughs> yeah, you just need four hands. There, now you can see it fit down in there. That's firm, I can't take it off. The spring will hold. The spring is always pushing this out up so that that clip will now fit. So we had to fit the clip to the rod. We had to fit the clip to the spider and then we had to fit them both together. And I'm going to mark this because this is going to be my top. So I'm going to take a marker and since I, I know this is all fitting. And I'm just going to I'm just going to make a black mark on my top. I won't see that, but and this will be the top. Okay, now we'll try and put it on again. Now we're going to put our rod in. And I got a little brass bushing right there, and that should fit right down and inside of there. There we are. And we should be able to spin this around without any issue. To help make the spider installation a bit easier, it helps to have someone hold the top of the rod in place against the steering wheel. Okay, so first put that rubber washer up in there. Then we got our spring. I made sure I got my top. I got my light switch rotated to the bottom position up there where it should be and the spider. Now remember, the spider's got to be oriented straight up and down. Now what I need to do, you know, push that in. I think I'm going to rotate this just a little my way. Success. 
Looks like we got it. Anyway. Spider heads. And I'm going to turn it in this way. And I can get this to stay on there. Like that. We'll tape the one button. turning in there, everything's there. And the next thing is we need to fill this now with oil. Okay. All right. And we're gonna fill our gearbox here. All right, so it's the Hyperlube, Rhizone Hyperlube oil supplement. This is what uh, Paul Shin uses, and I think I agree with him. This is just going to be super stuff. It's quite thick. You can see how thick that pours in there. But we're going to just fill this case. And we'll let it settle because it's probably going to have little oil po or oil air pockets in it that need to work their way to the top. So we'll fill it for now and we'll check it in a day or so. Make sure it's still topped off. There we are. All oiled up. All fitted for now. We're good. With the horn and light switch rod installed, our steering rebuild is finally complete. And with the mechanical side of the chassis largely finished, it won't be long before we turn our attention to the body. Join us next time as we shift into our next phase of the restoration and continue our journey breathing new life into this iconic Ford on the next episode of Epic Restorations.